Following suit from Origins and continuing Logan's desire to not only fight in every war, but fight on every front, apparently, I like that we start with the World War II bombing. Ah, Wolverine. Always finding new, useful things to do with his claws. <laughs> Freeing some doomed prisoners. You probably noticed the yellow tint given to this flashback. It adds to the surreal feeling to make us aware that this isn't present day, as well as adding to the ominous look of doom in the air. Yeah, I'm all about honorable deaths, and I give those guys credit and respect their choice. But a nuke's not honorless, is it? I guess then your enemy is killing you, but it's so painless. I'm with Yoshida. <sighs> this is uncomfortably intense. I wouldn't want them to sugarcoat the devastation, but the silence that gives way to screaming. Honestly, Brutal feels way too dismissive. And I'm only winning it because I believe I'm feeling exactly what Mangold wanted me to feel. Wolverine's not about to be a guy with an unpaid debt, saving the guy who freed you. Honestly, I was a tad annoyed that this was a memory at first, since these memories should be wiped. But making it a dream, technically his dream self's dream, a la Lawnmower Dog when Rick and Morty jump inside Mr. Goldenfold's dream character's dreams, it's more believable. It's something buried deep in his subconscious mind. More importantly, this is the setup for his arc in this film. His guilt over Gene has led him to abandon everything he knows as she continues to haunt him. This is canned hot. Although that's probably a lie since Scary Terry was lying about it too. I was a little worried that Days of Future Past would take the punch out of the setup for this film, but it really doesn't, especially since it's still part of Logan's story. The Wolverine that wakes up in the mansion at the end of Days of Future Past is our Logan. Even though he changed the past, he still has the pain of losing Gene. Uh, apparently this is not the same bear from The Revenant. Why call all that on store credit? Thanks, honey. Ah, <sighs> Hollywood, making everyone believe hunters are disrespectful, sexist, redneck white guys with murder in their hearts and nothing in their heads. This might be my earliest win removal. Some cliches just really need to die. Sad, sad mercy. And of all the reasons to come out of hiding, maiming a bear and forcing him to mercy kill his only friend at this point is a pretty good reason. It's a civic service, really. What's your name, mister? It's Logan. <laughs> and that's a poison broadhead. Go ahead, ask me where I found it. Where did you find it? Well, funny you should ask. While Wolverine is yucking it up at this guy's expense, he's also unknowingly participating in Viper Shadowing. All right, where is he? Tokyo. I'm not going to Japan. Yeah, you are. And that's just a win all by itself. And you seek what all soldiers do. And what's that? An honorable death. An end to your pain. I have not seen Logan yet, so these aren't spoilers. The trailers and tone of that film have led me to certain suppositions. And if they're true, it's interesting that the end of his story, one way or another, was started here, even if Days of Future Past and the end of this film shifted some of that pain. One day, I say goodbye to Mr. Yashida and I come right back. Acquiescence. And that's your vocab word for the week. So for Japanese viewers, this is probably shameless product placement. For me, it's, hey, sweet, appropriately Japanese whiskey, even if it's not a single malt. From Jackman's first frame in present day, he perfectly encapsulates a broken, angry, lost man just through tone of voice and facial expressions. The beard and hair don't hurt either, but his talent never ceases to amaze. Also beautiful beard win. Hidoyuki Sanada is always a win. He's just added so much to so many movies and TV shows I love not to be. The Last Samurai, Sunshine, Lost, and that's not even mentioning any Japanese media he's done. One eye on the past, and the other on the future. What a great visual example of what she just said with the sliding Japanese doors of the past that are actually mechanically operated. Cleanliness and modesty. I was not ready to die then. I'm not ready to die now. Logan shouldn't have been surprised in the end. He's pretty clear about his intentions. <laughs> Saving your future girlfriend. I was digging through the garbage for something to eat. So they just took you home with them? It was always difficult for Mariko to make friends. One thing I appreciate is that a lot of these characters are given backstories that play into the main plot. They could have just left Yukio as the badass bodyguard, but she's given a softer side that really pays off in the end. Given how often Logan hallucinates in his vivid dreams these days, I don't blame him for not being convinced this really happened at first. Also, she drugged him, so there's that. I didn't foresee it. Hints of his true fate, and hints that Viper knows his true fate and also doesn't know how to behave at funerals. Fun fact, in Asia, you often need an umbrella to protect you from the sun. That armor belonged to Shiriba Samurai, the silver samurai. Well, even though they went in another direction, I'm always a fan of a red herring that leads to something bigger. <laughs> Gross and brutal. Even as a mostly mortal man who's been shot twice, Logan is still a beast. He's like the definition of a badass good guy. So this dude's like the parkour mutant? With some impressive anti-stormtrooper aim. 
sign language win. And that's the second time Wolverine has been described by non-English communicators. So where are we headed, Mariko? I know Comic Logan is actually fluent in Japanese, but I sort of love that he sucks at pronouncing her name. It's right in line with the just-can't-be-bothered cinematic Logan. What do they do, like 300 miles an hour? You had to go and ask about the train speed. Whoa, that actually made me wince. Haha, <laughs> tricked you. Brutal. And Wolverine thought he needed wings to fly. He's a veterinarian. Student. Animal. Well, you are an unnaturally large wolverine. Hugh Jackman's workout routine. How much? Public service announcement. Don't harass women, really for any reason. And don't assume they're prostitutes. Fair warning, they may be able to kiss you to death. We were village champions that summer. He with a bow and me with the knives. As far as the changes made to Mariko, making her less damsel more formidable is hard to complain about. Chopsticks up right are a bad omen. Japanese etiquette lessons. What about this fiance of yours, Nostromo? Is Logan referencing Alien or Joseph Conrad? Either way, win. Hugh Jackman's workout routine. I don't blame him for using the wrong type of axe. Number one, it's likely all they had. And number two, he doesn't remember the glory of his lumberjacking days. This can't touch the kimono tying scene in The Last Samurai. I mean, just in the score of that scene alone. But I fully appreciate their building relationship working towards helping Logan move on. Although you might be thinking Logan barely goes a decade without finding a new lady friend. But it's something that adds to his torment. Outliving the loves of your life over and over would take a piece of your heart each time. Everyone you love dies. And since we know Gene is dead, this is just his own subconscious trying to continue to punish him for killing Gene. Because do you know what that means? An animal. Fierce creature with long claws and sharp teeth. Japanese language lessons. Also more importantly is Mariko's absolute lack of fear of Logan. I never talk. Hi, have we met? I'm guessing not. Let me introduce you to my claws. How did you know there's a pole down there? I did. <laughs> what? He's fine. I actually think this version of Viper fits better into the cinematic X-Men universe, giving her some mutation type powers rather than just using poison and theatricality. Nope. Makes those little bugs from the Matrix look cute. All right, those are terrible too. Also, performing heart surgery on yourself with no clue if your healing factor will reboot is pretty friggin' brutal. Don't hit my friends. Standing up for your friends. Hugh Jackman's workout routine. Love this sword battle, especially the color shift as they move in front of the blue tinted shades. And somehow, even without really knowing his power was back, you'd still be able to tell that Logan is himself again. And this film really took it to a whole new level of brutality. <laughs> What kind of monster are you? The Wolverine. But there is one more sacrifice you must make for her family. Go f yourself, pretty boy. Yeah, that sounds about right. This is a shot taken directly from the comic books that really does it justice. You can feel his determination giving way to suffering. Okay. Whoa, some dormant memories there. Crazy. Possibly even crazier that the filmmakers were willing to acknowledge origins. You are strong. You have courage. Real courage. Compliments. I know this isn't exactly what the fans had in mind for the Silver Samurai, or even like remotely close, but man is he a badass bad guy. Another case of just don't call him Silver Samurai, call him Baymurai or something. You may be impervious to poison, but how about Long Falls? Eh, never mind, you seem fine. I will say that this particular Silver Samurai is almost like the physical embodiment of Wolverine and makes for an interesting converse. A larger than life, virtually indestructible beast made even stronger by adamantium. Gross. Saving the guy you just captured, you dummy. Or doing the right thing or whatever. Two hands. Ha! I knew there was a reason for that random flashback. Call back! Two hands. Finally. So it's head smashing mixed with strangling. Got it. And again, just like the worst things anyone could ever go through. This makes the bonding from Origins look like a walk in the park. And speaking of Origins, if Stryker was able to figure out how to steal slash replicate Logan's healing factor for Weapon 11 in the 70s, Viper and all the other scientists would definitely be able to figure it out. And if it resides anywhere, bone marrow makes logical sense for housing immortality. So another decent twist. It was hard not to predict this one. Who else could it have been? Especially given that we watched the guy it's supposed to be die? But Yashida's motivations are interesting and maybe in a bit of a delusional way noble. He is trying to free Wolverine, and he did ask nicely in the beginning. I guess he can't say he didn't have it coming, though. You asked me to come say goodbye. Sayonara. If there was ever a character that could get away with pure cheese, it's Wolverine. I think you earned the right to use lame one-liners after having your bone marrow extracted. You are hurting people, Gene. 
I had to. Self-forgiveness. And here's that payoff to their relationship illustrating that family can be more than just bloodlines. Also hugging. I'm hoping this doesn't need to be explained, but I read a bunch of Redditors complaining about it. Just because his claws no longer have adamantium doesn't mean the rest of his skeleton isn't still very much covered in metal. You all get that, right? And I really can't complain about this tease. These two guys working together again? What's this? Open it. I know this isn't technically part of the movie, so I'm throwing it at the end, and I understand why they cut it, but the mere fact that it's here and this exists is a win. I want to give it 10, but I know deep down it's only worth one. There's such a large shift in tone from Origins to this film. It might actually be closer to the tone of The Last Stand given the death of Jean Grey and the impact that film had on this one. It's definitely pushed right to the edge of PG-13 as well, whereas previous X-Men films felt friendlier for a wider audience. Even without the success of Deadpool, the writing may have been on the wall with Logan, because it works. We feel every slice to the bone. Wolverine's brutality takes on a whole new level of savagery in this movie. And based on what I've seen of Logan so far, I assume we haven't seen anything yet. The fight choreography and action sequences were all super entertaining and heart pounding. And you know I'm a sucker for a chase through Tokyo. And being in Japan, they seem to honor the more martial arts driven action over the explodey origins type action. Obviously, there's still some CGI in this film, but even the CG elements feel real. So much of the fighting and dueling feels like it was done by real people, and a lot of the time it is done by real people. Just showing the slightest amount of blood on Wolverine's claws grounds his abilities in reality. There are a couple of themes bouncing around in this film. The main one is the idea of letting go of the past and moving forward, something both Yashida and Logan struggle with. Logan is haunted by the guilt he feels for Jean. It's not until the end that he's finally able to let her go. Mariko helps push him in the right direction by giving him something to live for, or at least reminding him that there are things slash people to live for, and after remembering that he's a soldier, that he has a job to do, he chooses life. Days of Future Past brought that starkly into focus, but the end of this film is his acceptance of that. He's literally out of the woods and back to being Wolverine. And then we have Yashida, unwilling to die, never truly moving past the day Logan saved him. And in a lot of ways, Logan created him. It's almost as if failing to give himself the honorable death of his superiors allowed him or even forced him to let go of all honor and really embrace the dark side without empathy for those around him. I mentioned some shots that were taken right from the panels of Claremont and Miller's Wolverine, but there were also some themes. It's a little more central in the comic, but Mangold touches on the cultural differences that separate Logan and Mariko, the honor of the Japanese people that Logan lacks. Ultimately, the departure from the comics is welcome since the Wolverine tells its own story around some of the same characters. And the use of Japan as a backdrop while still putting us in Logan's shoes as an outsider was really effective, especially given how often and appropriately people speak Japanese, leaving him on the outside. This has to be one of Hugh Jackman's best performances as Wolverine, especially given how much solo screen time he had that kept me enthralled. Combined with Mangold's direction, it was a huge step up from Origins. I can't say, however, that I'm not really sad we'll never get Darren Aronofsky's version of this film. He was in the running to do Man of Steel in a year one adaptation, but Wolverine seemed to be about as close as we got to seeing a comic book movie with the style of Black Swan, the despair of Requiem for a Dream, or the scale of Noah. But it was probably for the best. I know the Wolverine isn't everyone's favorite, and it's by no means perfect, but I'm glad that Mangold is the one to finish this trilogy, and clearly in the brutal style he wanted for this movie. My assumption is that the third act of this film is where the studio really started meddling, but it seems like he was given the freedom to make the exact film he wanted this time. I haven't been this excited for a comic book movie in quite a while. But for now, we need to look to next week. So let's see who can guess the next movie. This is about as obscure as I could make it without just showing a blurry screen transition. No one said these would be easy.